So in a previous video, I showed you how to capture video from a camera built into your computer for Windows and for Macintosh with C++ Builder and FireMonkey. On my Samsung Slate running Windows 8, I've got two cameras, a forward-facing and a backward-facing camera. Let's go and take a look and see those two cameras. We'll use my Get Devices and Sensors to show that we've got two cameras and that they're currently both stopped. And I've taken the video capture example and modified it to handle two cameras. Let's take a look at that project. I've got an image where the video frames are gonna appear from each of the cameras that I capture. I've got these little camera control panels that are stored in a layout. I've got a, a layout inside of a, another layout at the top. Uh, this parent layout is aligned to the top of the client area. And then I have two more layouts that contain a button for starting and stopping capture an ellipse for showing whether or not the camera is available. It's light gray if the camera isn't available. And it'll either be green or red, depending on if I'm capturing or the camera stopped. I've got a save button, so at any time when the camera is capturing bitmaps, I can save one of those bitmaps to my hard drive. And I've got a label just to say uh, camera one, and I've got that aligned to the top of the, of the layout that it's within. I've got the same little control panel for camera two over here. I've got a label in the center that'll display the number of cameras. And I've got a shared save dialog component that I'll use to save the bitmap from either of the cameras that shows up in the image. Let's look at the code. Uh, in the form create event, I get the count of the number of capture devices. So it says the number of devices equal to the capture device manager current count. And that's all the devices that are found. And then I'll initialize a number of video devices to zero. And I'll iterate through the number of devices that are found on the platform and say if the capture device manager current in the devices array that's found by the number of devices, if the media type is T media type video, then it's a video capture type. And I'll increment the number of video devices. So I run through the total number of devices in this devices array and increment the number of cameras. And then I'll output into my little uh, display area the number of cameras that are found. This example will work whether you have one or two cameras. And then if the number of video devices is greater than zero, meaning there's at least one camera, for camera one, I'll set the ellipse to CLA red to put a little red saying it's enabled, but it's not recording it. I'll enable the camera button to start capturing. And then I'll get access to camera one. I'll declare a vari variable video camera one. And I'll do a dynamic cast of the video capture device and get to the capture device manager, whatever that current capture device manager is. I'll get devices by media type to make sure that I only get uh, a video capture device. The number of cameras that are found will be inside of a collection. So I'll take the first element in the collection, or the first item in the collection, and that'll be my camera one. And if it actually is a camera, then we'll set its on sample buffer ready event handler to be my camera one, camera one sample buffer ready uh, function. If I have a second camera, meaning the number of video devices is greater than one, then I'll do the same thing for camera two, the camera two ellipse, the camera two button, to take whatever my second device is and make sure it's a video capture device with a dynamic cast. And again, I've got the device manager, the current device manager, get devices by media type, make sure it's video, and get the second element in the collection for my second camera. As you saw, two cameras, that were found. I'll set the video camera two's on sample buffer ready event handler to be my sample buffer ready function that are def that's defined down below. On the form destroy, I'll simply stop both of the cameras in case that either one of them was capturing. And then my event handlers for sample buffer ready, I'm going to use a thread synchronized to make sure I don't have any contention. I'm gonna use the current thread of the application and I'm going to set the function, which is my camera buffer sync function, 
and execute that in the current thread. And the same thing uh, for camera two. And these two functions are down here. If it's video camera one, I'll call and get a bitmap from the sample buffer uh, and store it in the image component on my user interface. And I'll do that if I'm using camera one or camera two. And then if I click the save button on either of the cameras, if they're running, I can get the bitmap and call save to file and use a sa that save dialog to save the bitmap out to disk. And then I have button click handlers for camera one and for camera two. So if I click on starting capture for camera one, if camera two state is that it's capturing, so if it's T capture device state capturing, then I will uh, stop camera two and set the ellipse to red and change the button to start for camera two and disable the save button so that we can't do anything with camera two. And then if camera one is capturing, then I'll stop the capture and just toggle between capturing and not capturing on, on camera one. And while I'm capturing, I'll set the, the color of the ellipse to lime green so that it's green to show that I'm capturing at that time. And I'll call start capture. So we can start and stop capture of a frame at a time and a bitmap at a time, as you saw in a previous video. And I'll do the same thing for camera two, button click to start. I'll see if camera one is capturing. So if camera one state is that it's a device state capturing, then I will stop camera one and I will start capturing from camera two, a bitmap at a time until I say to stop. And unfortunately, on these devices, like the Samsung with two cameras, you can't capture from both cameras at the same time. So let's take a look at this application in action. We'll run it. And notice I've got two cameras. So here's uh, camera one, and it's not running right now. The start button is enabled. It says cameras two. I've got camera two and its start button. So let's start with the camera that faces, uh, which is camera two that faces towards me on the Samsung Slate. So we'll uh, click the start button, and here it is. Hi, that's me, David I, and it's grabbing bits, bits at a time. And then we'll hit the save button, and we can uh, put out a PNG file. So this is test from camera two, and we'll stop it. And then we'll go and capture the, the backward facing camera, which is camera one. And you'll see the video coming in from it. There we're in the studio here in Scotts Valley, California and I can save the bitmap. And that one was a test uh, of camera one. And then we can stop that camera. And we can go back to camera two again. So that's it. That's two camera control on a Samsung Slate that has a forward and backward facing camera. Two camera control inside of C++ Builder XZ3 and FireMonkey. Let me just go to the header file so we can see where those two camera are declared. So we have video camera one, and it's declared as a T video capture device. And video camera two is declared as a T capture video device. And all of these are defined inside of FMX media header file. We can open that file of cursor. So all of the declarations are here. Here's the uh, T media time. Here's the uh, media type that you saw me use to, to see if I, in this case, I only wanted to work with video capture devices. Uh, in an earlier video, you saw me also capturing from audio, so I had used the audio media type. And here's the de declaration of T capture device state. So it's either capturing video or audio, or it's stopped not doing anything currently. And then the rest of this inside of, uh, inside of the media header file defines the interfaces, the capture device uh, interfaces and so on, T capture device manager. And then inside of two other files are the Windows and the Macintosh implementations of the actual control of the cameras through the platform that you're running on. These applications will work on 32-bit Windows, 64-bit Windows, and on Macintosh, uh, provided that you have a camera. If you can't find a camera, so there's no devices that are found, then, then neither of those buttons are enabled. And down here, the video camera will be null because there's nothing associated with it. So nothing will, uh, will run. It'll just uh, 
say can't do anything with camera one, can't do anything with camera two if there's no cameras found on your hardware. So that's two camera control uh, on a device like a Samsung Slate Series 7 that has a forward and backward facing camera using C++ Builder XE3 and FireMonkey.